How long, how long have those, oh, well, never mind. Well, good evening. My name's uh, Christine Whitlock. Um, I'm from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Welcome to the uh, free Zoom meeting for script writers and uh, filmmakers. So uh, just to remind you that um, this meeting is being uh, recorded and it'll be put unedited on my YouTube channel. I'll send you uh, the details uh, tomorrow with the chat and um, the document about uh, putting together your screenwriting um, resume. So we'll first start with uh, introductions uh, in the order that people came on board. So Ardell, you're first. Hi, I'm from Vancouver Island and I'm in uh, the learning phase before I start my first pilot. I, I do have the ideas down in plotter, but uh, I haven't actually written the screenplay yet. And what genre will it be? It's murder mystery, same as my books. Great. Okay, Pat. Hi, Pat Semler. I'm in Kissimmee, which is just south of Orlando, Florida. I'm working on a contained script thriller, which is coming along very nicely. I have uh, about 16 scenes to add. Um, I have a small horror script with Alex French that she's going to produce. And I sent another horror piece to Alex Moreno, which may be getting a table read. Great. Alison Benson, welcome. You're new to us. Yes, hi. Uh, Vivian Lee is a friend of mine and invited me to join. So thank you so much, Christine, for letting me join part of this great group. I love Canada being there. <laughs> I've been all the way from one end to the other, went up to the Hudson Bay to see the polar bears. So I think Canada is like a, a close relative of Australia. A lot of Australians live there because we very like-minded. Um, anyway, I am currently working on my rewrites for, I'm a screenwriter, working on my, my rewrites for two, um, a feature, a dramedy feature based on interracial adoption. Um, I'm trying to represent minority groups of Pacific Islanders and it's based on our own story, which is uh, we lived in the Cook Islands for five years and we adopted a child while we were there. And just talking, the story's a comedy based on the relationship between the mother and the daughter and trying to get uh, a wedding planned and just all the things that happen along the way. Uh, the other one I'm working on is a, uh, it's a nine minute animation, which got to semi-finalists in Screen Crafts Animation last year. Uh, just about, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Just about um, a, an abandoned little dog looking for his for, forever home. Hey. And I've got a storyboard artist. It's a young guy that's just finished university in Queensland and he's working with me to do the thumbnails and we've been, he's spending a lot of time together. So uh, he's very talented. I think I'm kind of lucky to grab him while he was still at uni because now that he's finished, he's going to be... Um, a hot topic, you know, to people are going to want him. So that, that's where I'm at. So, um, thank you again for having me. Great. And another newbie is Wyatt. You have to unmute yourself. Sorry, my mute button was covered <laughs> by something else. My apologies. Hi, I'm in Peterborough, Ontario, uh, Canada. And uh, I've been concentrating on screenwriting for about six years now. Uh, I've been writing plays for about 20. And yeah, you know, kind of successful, kind of not. <laughs> um, and, and what genre is your screen? Um, <laughs> I, I float around. I float around. I, I have uh, three features right now. And uh, one's a sci-fi. Uh, one is a, a drama, and uh, another one is kind of a rom-com-ish uh, drama, and then I've got a uh, one that is more of a rom-com. So I try to like write lighter dramas, I guess, and a uh, uh, two 
pilot scripts as well to start a breaking story on a new pilot. Great. Julian. Hi, everybody. Hi to the new faces and old and all. Julian Martin, I'm a screenwriter uh, slash novelist. I've written one novel, so I guess that counts. But uh, mostly scripts. I've been writing a long time, but the past four years, I've been <clears throat> getting a little bit more serious about actually doing something with them and also um, shaping up and uh, getting a lot of critique and shaping up the old ones. I didn't get many critiques before, and I really learned in the last four years that how important it is to get feedback, and um, wrote one of my most highly praised scripts, Death's Brother, a horror script. Just completed uh, my comedy, a March Brothers-inspired script called Poppycock, and I uh, have gotten some varied reviews, but I, I did get uh, one review on Coverfly from a person who was a Marx, huge March Brothers fan, and they gave me four and a half stars out of five and said, bravo, sir, bravo. Said it was brilliant. Said they laughed on every page. So my audience is out there. Now I just got to keep working on, working on finding them, and that's what we're all about here, networking and getting to know people. So welcome. Great. Dane. Hi, thanks for having me back. I'm Dan Chikelli from also from Hamilton, Ontario. And it sounds uh, pretty Hamilton, your story at the beginning there, Christine. Um, I'm a writer, director, and editor. Um, in the past couple weeks since we met, I finished about the first draft. I got about a one scene to add to the first draft of a short screenplay that I'm writing right now, and soon to get into the rewrite of that. Um, other than that, I did some filming. I uh, shot a fake trailer with a couple friends just to get some practice in. Um, it's it's just kind of getting a bunch of shots uh, cut together with stock footage to see how I could mix that to music and practice some editing and cinematography. Um, and I'm very excited to learn from everybody as I'm still in the very beginnings of my career as a writer. Um, and yeah, happy to be here. Great. Alex. Hey, good evening, everybody. Wyatt, nice to finally meet you. <laughs> Wyatt's my guest. We met on Facebook, I think. I don't know. So I'm not used to social media, so it's interesting when you finally put a face to images and things like that. So welcome, Wyatt. Uh, there's a lot going on. Too many spinning plates. I'll just talk about the two things that are in the uh, chat. So one is a call for scripts. Please read it before you reach out to me. It is extremely specific on what the uh, producer actor is looking for. Female led, mid, early to mid forties lead character. Production viability is, a, is an issue. So I believe that the budget item has to be under a million. For instance, a friend of mine has a great script, page two. Um, some type of shot from above the building with the street below. I'm like, what are you doing? That's $800,000 to rent the crane. No, stop. You know, just put establishing shots. So if you have an idea, I'd like you to go through the script if you want to submit it to me and just take out anything that is just going to kill a budget. I'm just warning you now. I'm pre-screening for her. So if I see, you know, aerial shots and helicopter rides, it's just not happening. So just want to put that out there, please. And the other one is um, Pat and I are talking about doing a table read with a group of actors from England. Um, and the, the director producer of it is pretty well known in some fields. So uh, I've just come on board with them. I can't give you more details because I literally came on board on Friday. <laughs> so we designed a fly if you're interested in maybe having a table read. It can only be uh, supernatural thrillers or horror. That's the only genre that they're interested in working with for now. So that's that. Um, and none of my flow riders, are, oh, Julian is here. So uh, still working on the flow project, looking for funding, but the riders are doing a great job and uh, the scripts are coming along nicely. Cheers, everyone. Good. Shadow. Can't hear you. 
Oh. No, we can't hear you. No. <laughs> Technical difficulty. How's that? Good, good. Oh, there, okay. I just had to unplug it and plug it back in again because it said it was working. Yeah, so um, been doing good uh, over the next 48 hours. Keep my fingers crossed. Facet.tv is launching with, um, with its streaming content. Finally, it's been quite a journey to get it happen. Not too onerous, just very, very technical and stuff like that. And we've got, uh, I'm being inundated with, with um, potential content content and stuff like that so uh, we're starting with several series and um, some feature films and uh, we'll see what happens in terms of writing I'm uh, just finally got to the point where I can start writing on a supernatural historical show uh, film um, about um, a Roman military tribunal uh, during the Dacian Wars and um, which will be fun to do. I had to do a lot of research for it. And um, Alex, I might have somebody I can refer to you for a, uh, with a, a very good, unusual, uh, low budget horror script. Um, cool. Thank you. So, so I don't know if I have your email, but- I'll um, put it in the box like I do every week. People don't make a note. Thank Please you. make a note <laughs> of my email. I know. <laughs> there you go. So that's it. Good. Doug, what's new with you? Oh, not much. Just old retired people getting up from a nap. That's about <laughs> all. Now that the COVID thing is pretty much over out here and I've got all my stuff, I've been disinfected and injected and everything else. I'm getting ready to start going back out, do some more teaching, do some more shooting, uh, start getting back into the distribution channels out here. And it's probably time I get it back to writing some more stuff too. And you're still looking for uh, short films. Um, I'm kind of like Shadow. I'm, he's got all kinds of input you know, on content. I have none. So I'm constantly looking for content. Good. Mark. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. How you doing? Dane looks like he's at the scene of a Dexter show or something there. He's got all the all the plastic in the background. Um, I'm doing all right. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing good. Just uh, working hard at my, uh, my day job, unfortunately. Working me like a rented mule. Um, but uh, I've been working on a new screenplay, a new, new pilot, uh, which I think is kind of fun. So we'll see how that goes. Um, connected with a literary agent uh, on LinkedIn, which was kind of nice. And she's uh, reading my horror script called Snarl. It's on the cover fly in top 20. So that's kind of nice. We'll see what happens there. Maybe something good will happen. Don't know. Uh, I've got a producer that's reading uh, my sci-fi on stage 32. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. You know, you never know. You never know. Just keep pitching and pitching. We'll see what happens. It's like throwing the spaghetti against the wall. Uh, what else is going on? Still working on the graphic novel. It's kind of fun to do. Um, I think that's, I think that's about it. Not, not too much other than that. Good. Yep. So Christy Whitlock, I'm from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, uh, working on my, um, two spec Hallmark, um, Christmas, um, scripts. One's a, uh, mystery TV pilot and the other's, uh, a romance uh, script. Um, I, I haven't been thinking that much about my um, 
horror scripts, the, the two that I'm working on. Um, but uh, Mark and I um, uh, put together a, a horror writers group, and we still have room for a couple of more people if, if you want to, to join us. And, and uh, uh, the whole purpose is to, to read and uh, positively critique each other's work so uh, we can um, become um, better um, script writers. Okay, um, so tonight's topic, this came to me as an email through uh, script writing staffing. So it was interesting about uh, putting together a screenwriting uh, resume. And, and as you know, with um, all resumes, uh, your name has to be right at the top and uh, your contact information. Now, in this day and age, we don't normally mail things out, so you don't need to put your mailing address. So just, you know, if you, like I would just put Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and my phone number, my uh, email, my personal website. And right at the top of uh, the first thing that uh, you need to do is your online presence. It says, uh, let's not be coy. If you can attach a link to your work credits where an employer can immediately validate your authenticity, then that's your ace in the hole. So if you have an IMDB, this is where you would list it. So that, that's got to be uh, first and foremost. Also list your website or Facebook fan page here and attach all sites you operate or are highly involved in. So if you have your own blog, Twitter, LinkedIn profile. Um, I also was once asked um, about my stage 32 presence. So I have that uh, on there right at the top of, of all, all the links. And it says here, uh, they also want to know you can be used as a marketing tool if and when the project gets made. So they want to make sure that you have a social media presence and you would help uh, to send out uh, notices about various things that, that are going on with the projects. <clears throat> so next is credits. It says whether you have an IMDB or not, this is where you list your credits, but not all of them. List the most recognizable films. It says no more than three that were made. List the production company year it was made, any recognizable actors, directors who were part of it, and any awards attention it garnered. It says, no, this section should be used for spec scripts you sold, not work for hire. So anything uh, along those, those lines. But it says only have one script produced to screen, no worries. Exploit the hell out of it, attach the YouTube or Vimeo link to your resume. If you have not had any produced work but have scripts, options, or purchase, go ahead and list them here following the, the same format. Now, I uh, personally wrote, directed, and produced uh, four feature films, and three of them got on Netflix through my first distributor. So of course I put that, that down, that, that they were on Netflix, but if, of course I didn't put what year they were on and, and how they got there. So that can all be explained later. Okay, next is commissioned work. A producer always likes to know someone roll, roll the dice on you already and it paid off. This is where you can list your previous commission writing jobs. Be sure to list your job title, co-writer, script doctor, script ideas, the project's duration, and the company producer who commissioned you. You do not need to list how much you were paid, so nothing about money in any of this. Like the credit section, only list up to three and note any awards or celebrity attachments to the, the project. And also not where you got 
these. Like I got um, a paid uh, work through ink tip. I tell people about it, but I don't put it down that that's where, where it came from. Degree. This section is hit or miss, but it really is a hit when it's a hit. Some employers absolutely demand their screenwriters have a degree. On any of the producer pitches on InkTip, they require a resume. So right off the bat, you need it there. Now, in any of the producers that I have sent through script screenwriting staffing, uh, very few have, have asked for a resume. Now it says here, some employers absolutely demand their screenwriters have a degree. Some only care about experience. Regardless if you have a screenwriting related degree, especially from a reputable film school, list it. List your major, any professor mentors who you worked under while there and graduation date. Film school students have different experiences, but if yours was a success where your student films garnered national attention, graduated top of your class, list it. Now it says not everybody goes to film school, so I wouldn't turn down this section because your degree is in something else, but be reasonable. So if your degree had anything to do with writing, arts, film, etc., then I'd add this to the resume. Otherwise, someone with a nursing degree should leave this section out, at least that's my opinion. Unless you put that in, if they're asking for um, someone who um, has a script about health. nursing. Yeah. Pardon me? If you're an expert in health and you want to put yes. that. If, if they're looking, uh, especially when you're pitching something and, and you have that uh, experience. Like um, I wrote um, a TV pilot for um, a mystery series, uh, Wine Crimes. Now I um, researched over two summers and uh, personally bicycled from Toronto to Niagara wineries, um, researching all of the wineries to put together uh, a book about bicycling. And that's what my uh, script is about. And I also was um, a producer, writer, director for the local cable station and a journalist for uh, 10 years. So that is all part of what I put when I'm trying to pitch that script. But uh, I don't always put it in in my writing uh, resume. You had to say something, Alex? Yeah, just that's how I broke in. I was asked to critique a script about HIV, being an expert in it. And I started critiquing the whole story and everything. And that's literally how I broke in. So I think if people know you're an expert in something, it's good for them to know that because a producer may have a kind of a decent script, but like you said, we need a medical person to go through this because it's so full of holes. If you've got that on your resume and you're a writer and a medical person, guess what? You're going to get the job to rewrite it. That's right. Shadow. I, I, I agree with that entirely because, um, you know, when I look for outside writing or consulting, it's because I need something specialized and some special knowledge that really takes a lot of research, not just research, but also maybe some familiarity with the realities of of stuff because research doesn't always show those things. So I think that that's important if you have, if you're an expert in anything that you might put that on there. It, and uh, continues, I also encourage newer writers or writers with no formal education to list screenwriting workshops, conferences, and online classes that they have attended or participated in. So for those of you with very little uh, experience, you can put that you've been attending these uh, uh, Zoom uh, meetings for script writers and um, filmmakers. So screenplay contests. This is another hit and miss, but there is a community in the, <laughs> Alex is putting it down, in the entertainment industry who considers Winning or placing in a screenplay contest, a huge honor. I don't care how big or small the contest was, if your script won, promote it, list it. List the contest, 
test title, the, the genre you wanted, and the year month. Be sure to list the scripts title that one too. You never know when a company might ask to take a peek. Now in um, Network ISA, they want to know about that. They want to know uh, if it's uh, placed or won in any contest. So, you know, that, that's one of uh, the ones that I check on a regular basis uh, of uh, what uh, pitches producers are, are looking for. Christine, may I? Yes. I'm asking may I. Does anybody have a calculator on them? I'm just asking, does anybody have a calculator on them? We'll just do the math. Ready? I placed top 3% in a script writing competition. It was 50 bucks to enter. I calculated I was, I was off 150 top 3%, which meant 5,100 people entered the competition. What's $50 times 5187? Someone top of the math. I'm going to guess it's a quarter of a million dollars. Yep, about a quarter million. Quarter million dollars. I mean, I just think competitions, I just think it's so, it takes advantage of the writer. I think occasionally if you've elevated your writing and you're such a good writer, enter into some of the biggies and see where you place. Yeah, but all these other competitions we have no names and some give you a certificate. Really? I'm getting a certificate? Oh my God. Thank you so much. I don't know. I think it just takes advantage of the writers and the money they make for what you get. I think a competition that says like, where's Doug, right? Doug, a competition says, shorts, if you win it, we make you short. That's a good competition to enter. But all these other things that they're gonna to try to get you into meetings and shit, forget that, waste of money. That's just my opinion. I'd like a vote though, at the end of everything. I'd love a vote to see of 12. I'm in, yeah, I'm in, I'm with you, Alex. I mean, these, the contests that I see out there are absolute trash. I mean, that's, that's the kindest word I can come up with. And all they are are siphons into your wallet. That's it, period. End of discussion. Don't even go there. Um, 100% agree. Yeah. On the same page, all three of us. And then uh, last time, Doug, you said you're planning to have a, a script contest that you plan to have it for free for people to enter for the first time. I'm not doing a script contest. I'm building another film festival. Film festival, I, yes. Yeah, I want film people festival. to, yeah. And I'm gonna run films, short films for free. I don't believe in charging people for these things. I'm against it. So next is the expertise in subject matter. So here, you know what uh, Alex had said, if, if you're a, a sports uh, writer and, and you know about baseball and, and they're looking for, for that sort of thing, then you need to, to put all of your information. It says, but please do not exaggerate your connection or relationship with the employer's subject matter to get the job. It, it never works. So as long as you have uh, legitimate expertise in, in the subject matter. Other publications. So like Julian uh, has uh, novel writing, so he can put what other stuff he's, he's had published. So other forms of writing, list it and be damn proud of it. This is where you would list your most accomplished publications, books, articles, short stories, and, and poetry. Remember this section is essentially here to add more credibility and diversity to your writing. I have a question for you. Yes. If you sent me a resume like that, do you think I'd hire you? Well, it depends what you're hiring for. If it's for a script writer. Okay, I'm, I'm hiring for a screenwriter. And you send me a resume that's really full of all kinds of flash and dance and sizzle, do you think I'd hire you? Well, if you have credits, do you think I'd hire you? Depends what you're looking for. I think you might interview me, and then if you liked me, and I came across as there sincere, hardworking, 
There and you go. Bingo. Allison wins the prize. It's about that. <laughs> I only bring people on board that I personally know. You know, I have interviewed them. I met them. I worked with them. And that's from my old time running around on, in the Hollywood scene. That's where you get a job. You want to work on a set. You start out as a PA. You start out as a gopher. You move your way up to a grip. You learn not to knock, knock over the light stands. And that's where you make connections and get in the industry. Now, you can sit here and write your brains out and have a web page and tout it all over the place. But when it gets down to where the rubber meets the road, you got it. It's eyeball to eyeball, period. End of discussion. So are you saying that no producers ever uh, request resumes? You can, no, it's not the producer that requests your resume. It's oh. the, uh, you know, their human affairs department or, you know, whatever. Those people want your resume. Okay. But so. the producer doesn't give a lick about what your resume is. Because okay, so you would, only, you would only submit your resume to people that want it though, right? Correct. And I, you okay, know, sir. a lot of people want it, but they want it through their, you know, departments, their personnel departments and stuff like that. The resume doesn't give a lick. Uh, the, the, the producer kind of doesn't Hollywood's give a lick. Hollywood's making these days, maybe they should look at more resumes. Well, they should be working more with people they know. <laughs> How do you get to know a person if you, if, if you don't reach out? I just explained that to you. Take a job on a set, volunteer on a set, become a PA, a uh, gopher, become something like that. Just go to work on a set, be a hanger on or, you know, you don't even have to do anything. Just be on the set, be pleasant, be friendly, be workable, be, you know, someone that I as a producer would want to work with. Uh, I don't want your resume. I don't care if you went to high school. I don't care. It doesn't matter. That doesn't show me anything. Show me what you can do. Don't tell me you can do something because I put you on the set and I find that you can't. You have just, well, in the first place, you're never going to work on my set again. But um, I'm meeting all kinds of uh, producers. They're not asking for my resume because they have looked at my LinkedIn resume that's, that's on there. So um, I, I have been justified for, for them to speak to me. And I have uh, four producers that are interested in my horror scripts once uh, they're uh, finished. And, and uh, you know, they're all over the world and, and I'm never gonna meet them on a film uh, set, you know, and uh, you had, did you ever finger up uh, Alex? Yeah, I was just gonna say to Ardell that, I mean, what Doug has said is, is true in so many ways, but I think other things are taking place as well. Most of my work is because I've got connections because of what I've done but also I could be the right person at the right time meeting in a group like this through something in California, a bunch of actors. Someone says, Hey, you're from England. I'm like, yeah, we start floating. Two months later, I got a new friend. I didn't know was the creative executive at Enclave Productions in Studio City. I mean, just because I was floating with her. So things can happen off the set. I think it all goes down to marketing yourself whether it's through your resume, whether it's through things like this, okay? Or if you've got a website that showcases what you've done is very, very important. I direct everyone to my website. They work I've done. I've made shorts, I've made animations, I've done documentaries, I've done, you know, these type of things that people can judge me by. Yes, Shadow. Yeah, I'm a little confused by the... the um point about uh, degrees and, and you know uh, degrees that said some some people are going to want a degree for a writer I understand I can see that in a corporate situation for not a screenwriter for somebody like a journalist um, I don't I don't even understand that for a script writer to me it's not only irrelevant it's it's crazy because um, who cares I want to see what your writing is and um, you know, I 
you know, and I'll be honest, some of the, the very, very best writers in terms of storytelling and story and plot that I've ever met um, are the worst copy editors and grammar people and like seriously uh so you know those kinds of people are going to be filtered out by that like who's do, who's doing the hiring of that situation in a writer's room you're probably going to get a job because you know somebody or because somebody saw your work or someone recommended you and then they're going to look at your work they're not going to look at your 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 uh degrees that that one i find a little weird um because i don't know who would hire a screenwriter for that in that kind of context where a degree mattered. Um, but apart from that, you know, what, what Doug said is correct. You, you know, um, I don't know any producer who would dare hire a writer that they haven't met or don't know um, or don't get to know, you know, so before they hire them, they're going to, they're going to check out their abilities themselves and whether they can work with them. So if they don't do that, be suspicious as the writer because you they really it really is a personal relationship creative relationship and if they're not if they're not checking you out and if you're not checking them out there's something funky about that situation to my mind um you have to be vetting if they're not vetting you properly then there's something funny going on be, just be suspicious that's my my opinion no because i know it all uh, boils down to chemistry the people you're going to work with are either going to work with you or they're not. And that's all it is. You're not going to hire me because I have an undergraduate degree in aerospace engineering, are you? No. no. It doesn't matter. Well, this week um, I met uh, a producer and, and he uh, said, oh, I may have uh, some writing work for you. So, of course, uh, the next thing I ask, is this a paid assignment? Right? And I haven't heard from him the rest of the week. So, once you, know, you that, start that, talking money. That was the first, that was the first best question. <laughs> That's the very first question because that filters out the all the other stuff that you were going to go through <laughs> before you found that out. Because if it's a pay, pay to sign, my next question would be, uh, you know, uh, what percentage is the writer being paid? Like, is it three to 5%? And, and what is, is your budget? Because if it's, you know, they expect you to, to do it for a hundred bucks or whatever, forget it. Right. Like, yeah, or uh, student films or, or, specialty uh certain things that if, if you've had experience you know you, you don't need uh, it for credit they say well we'll give you a credit but you know that's not always the point if you're going to be spending you know two to three months right writing a script yeah credit doesn't pay the rent that's right well you know the thing that you're concerned about is how much are they going to pay you as percentage my question is percentage of what? Now, if we make this film, we produce this thing off your script and we don't make any money. So your percentage is 5% of zero. And I have accountants who can take 100% of profit and turn it into zero. I mean, that's, that's the way you avoid having to you know, make a profit. So, when you say percentage, you put yourself out there for percentage, you better damn well figure out percentage of what. Now, I don't like that idea. You, you come up with a number. I'll give you five bucks an hour. I'll give you a thousand dollars a page. I'll, you know, whatever, based on my knowledge of you and whether I can even bother working with you. Uh, don't get, don't ask for a percentage because you won't get anything. Well, this is, uh, you would want to be paid uh, ahead of time because uh, I don't know of, of too many people that can work for months with uh, zero money. Uh, unless if you're being paid ahead home. of time, you're being paid a percentage of what? There is nothing to be a percentage of. So you have to negotiate your fee up front and get it signed, sealed, and delivered. And typically do it in sections. 
In other words, I'll give you a certain amount of it up front. If I buy your script, I'll buy it for more. I may bring you on as the writer to do the rewrites or whatever. But, you know, if you're doing it as a, if you're calculating it all as a percentage and you're doing it up front, nothing has been produced. So you have a percentage of what? Nothing. Well, but if the budget, just say, is one million, and if you're uh, to get 3% of the budget as a writer, and you get uh, so much to, you know, once you hand in the, the first draft, you, ha you would uh, have uh, how you're going to be paid in, in whatever increments. A budget is meant. a guess. That what? I say a budget is a guess. Yes. And it's never right. So if you decide that you're going to write a script for 5% of a $3 million budget, that's fine. But we get this film made and it only costs us $1 million. Uh, so we got to pay you 3% uh, or 5% of a $3 million budget. We ain't going to do that. We ain't going to like you for that. And what if we, it takes us $10 million to produce this film? We're only going to pay you 5% uh, of $3 million. So no, just get your contracts cut and dried. No, no, and no. Well, that would all be in the contract. Right. Get your contract yes. cut and, how, and dried. And how much you were going to get paid and when. That's correct. Usually in the old days when you sold a script, you know, we'd sell your script in those days for a low six against a mid six, maybe. I've done that a couple of times. So what that means is I sell a script for $100,000. It goes to production and on the first principal day of filming, they pay me another $400,000 and I'm out of it. I'm clear, clear, free, on. And that's the way it used to be. And I think that that's probably a way that works pretty well because that way everybody understands where they're coming from, what what they're expecting to get, where they're expecting to go. There's no muss, there's no fuss, there's no monkey in around. Dane, did you have your hand up? Oh. Another thing uh, to put in the resume is if you have a agent or a manager. But uh, again, this could be a, a good thing and a bad thing because it depends who the producer will be working with because, you know, if, if it's uh, a relationship that you want uh, with the producer and then you have to bring in these other two people, then that could uh, cause uh, difficulties. Your primary means of contact is not going to be by your resume. It's going to be by your agent or your manager. And your agent or your manager will have your resume in his back pocket when he walks into the meeting room. But, you know, again, you're trying to bring other people in afterwards. You need to get it all cut and dried up front. That way you just don't have any arguments. Nick, are you there to, uh, you came in late to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, sorry about that. It's uh, my nephew. I had to get my five-year-old nephew and, <laughs> you know, but I, I made some arrangement, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, I, uh, I'm doing well. I uh, am currently still working on um, the drama that uh, I started and I've been using Celtics for that. Celtics, um, is, is you know it's it's pretty useful in um, you know drafting out. They have uh, note cards and index cards, and they get saved for each project and script. And you could uh, also upload outlines, and you know so that way, um, it, it's just like an organized way to work on you know different projects. So I'm working on um, that, and then my initial script that I was working on, and. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, I'm still, if I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to um, work on it and hopefully uh, I, I still want to submit to screen craft competition by, uh, I think it's August uh, or end of July. So um, yeah, it's about 80 to hundred pages. So right now it's in the initial stages and I'm, um, yeah. Good. John, we haven't seen you for a bit. Tell us what you're working on. Well, I'm, I finished up the rewrites and I sent them out. Uh, I got a couple of reads back that I have to get the scripts out to. Um, got some coverage on the, the one I told you about. Again, that's the third time I've gotten coverage in, over the course of four years. Another strongly considered. This one was even a little stronger. Um, so it's doing good there. And I just got to see what's going on with the reads. I do have a question for anybody out there. I've had people before when I've gotten reads ask, ask me to sign their uh, NDA or their, you know, someone that voids, you know, them of any lawsuits. Um, I had one the other day ask me for my NDA. That's the first time somebody asked me for my NDA. Okay, is this common? Because, I mean, I got into it late. I've, I must have signed about 10 of those the other way. And number two is, does anybody have one? Because I can't find a, a legitimate one. They all look like... Uh, Christine has some. I have some. A bunch of us have them. What's that? I said Christine has some. I have some. It's just to cover the, you know, the reader who you're sending it to. It's to cover them. But you send it to them. Okay. Well, you're... Sorry, this is you're the writer and the reader is asking you if you have an NDA? Yeah. Usually the company has okay. sent me their form. So that's the first time it's... Yeah, they, they would want to do that because... It's their form. <laughs> yeah. But um, you, as if you're sending out your own agreement, your own stuff, you should have your own non-disclosure agreement. Uh, that that I mean, usually they're standard mutual NDAs, you know, and they're just there so that everyone feels good that they can share this information without the you know possibility or the that someone's going to run off. And like I said, it was just the first time it, that somebody asked me for mine instead of me going with their. Yeah, I do that all the time. I ask writers if they want me to execute an NDA beforehand, because frankly, I'd rather they just do the paperwork. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's easier. Um, otherwise, I have them myself. But yeah. John, I just put one in the uh, chat room for you. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. I could just download that from here, yeah? Yeah, th there's quite a few different ones. You have to read them carefully because some are a little, the time frames are a little strange. Okay. Yeah. You may have to negotiate that, you know. Might be interesting to have, um, you know, a negotiating points for writers session, you know, because there's a lot of interesting, like that, like you said, sometimes in NDAs, there's some weird, bizarre non-competition clause stuff that have nothing to do with NDAs and NDAs. And sometimes they go on for years and years. I've seen really wacky stuff that nobody should sign. Um, and things that uh, Doug has been mentioned, you know, about, uh, I mean, his comment on uh, what do you get paid is actually pitching to net to profits, percentage of profits, not percentage of budget necessarily. And so you have to define what profit is in your contract. And there's a lot of pitfalls in that, but it's, you know, there's some very straightforward principles that would be good for writers to know in general. It would be good. It's always good. Something that you don't learn, you know, you spend so much time trying to learn the, uh, the business and everything. You don't look at that part as much. The writing part, I'm saying, you take so much time to do. Oh. So John, is this your Western that you're talking about? Here. No, no, no. The Western I put off for a little bit because that's that needs. I, I got a, a guy who does nothing but westerns, and um, I forgot the guy's name, uh, something Tim or something like that. And he he does nothing but westerns. He does big westerns, and he wasn't looking for a script, but he said, "Listen, I'll do you a favor." He said, "I'll read it for you, and if I like it, I'll pass it on." I did pass it on, but he gave me twenty-two pages of notes for free. And it was really well written. I mean, it was really well done. He went into little things and stuff. And he loved. He said he loved the thing, but he said it, it, for him, he wouldn't make it unless these things were done. So I got to get back to doing that one eventually and get that back to him too. You know, he wanted more of the love story in it too, you know, the romance part. So um, whereas that was more of a side thing and what I did. So, you and know. What's the genre of uh, the one you're working on now? 
It's a it's a drama. It's a drama. It's actually it's a drama with a lot of comedy. I use the term dramedy, but the person who just did the script thing said, "John, you're not going to get it sold with it, filling it as a dramedy." It has a ton of comedy in it, but it is a drama. She wanted me to do it as a thriller. She actually said, I suggest you rewrite the whole thing, have a lot of blood and gore. And that's not what it was written about. So anyway, um, she's a she's a producer too. She said, if you want to do it that way, get back to me. I, it, it, it wouldn't even make sense that way. I mean, it would be just nonsense ago. So, you know, anyway. Good. I have a question. Um, yeah, so uh, I am uh, working on a script and uh, I was interested in submitting um, uh, my script to ScreenCraft and uh, Final Draft, uh, Big Break Screen uh, Writing Competition. Um, so is it possible to submit to multiple ones or is there any rules on that? Yeah, but Nick, can I ask you a question? Why are you sending it to a competition if it's an early draft? Um, I mean, I just think because, you know, I'm kind of novice, so I want to kind of just get exposure, get a little bit more. Um, yeah, I mean, it's only been well, a few why months. Why don't where... you use a different service, for instance, a writer's group? I gave you my massive list a few weeks ago, a writer's group, Coverfly. Why okay. are you spending 50, 60 bucks just to kind of see, you know, feedback? Um. Yeah, I mean, I guess just feedback and I mean, if That's I- been a nice day and I'd probably give you feedback, you know, you, you've got yeah. my email. I Nick, think it just, maybe my... it kind of just motivates me to, like if I enter in a screen, it, like, you know, if I don't have something coming up and I don't have like a, because I think the time frame, like July, I feel like I can uh, develop a script by then and have all the edits by then. So it kind of gives me some motivation and some milestones and I, I do better like in a structure. So no, no, I you, know... say, you like to give yourself a timeline, but what I'm yeah. saying is as a yeah. screenwriter of seven years, you're only just the last year I've been sending my scripts out. You probably just saw me put something in there. Okay. okay. I, I'm at the level now like CBS Viacom is listening okay. to me, wants my sure. script. But sure. years ago, I would never have considered putting my stuff out there because it takes many drafts to get to a level where you need to be. And I right. feel that you're kind of, you, you're going the wrong route. I'm trying to save you money. I'm trying to save you time here. Okay, send me your great. first 10 pages. Okay. Send me your sure. first 10 pages. We're going to uh -huh. meet. And I'm okay. going to go through line by line about your writing, okay? Okay. Absolutely sure. what, what Alex has told you. Because okay. what you're going to do is you're going to send out your first draft to some festival screenwriting contest. It's going to be so bad that they won't even look at it. You've got, you know, they've got your money. They're not going to say anything to you except that sorry you didn't make it. So what kind of feedback is that? I mean, does that do you any good? No, no. I mean, I just, I mean, I just, you know, I don't, I don't know the industry that much. So you know, I'm still learning what's, what's, uh, what are more effective ways, and you know, what, yeah, how I can give myself. Well, that's up. one way you're going to learn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Nick, save your money, mate. Listen, I'm telling you right now. Every, please, can everyone else back me up here? Yeah, the other thing with every the other week, I tell everybody every week. Start yeah, absolutely, money. absolutely, Alex. Thing, the other thing with contest is, it depends who read these readers. They pay readers what is it, fifteen, twenty five dollars a script to read it, and it depends who reads it. I'll give you an example. The script that I'm now getting back out. My first time I put it in, I put it in the nickels, which is the biggest one if you if you know anything about it. I put it in the nickels. It came in the top 20%. Okay, for my very first screenplay ever. Great. Okay, I got a couple of reads because of that. But the, the people who read it gave me better feedback than the the other one. So I did all the changes. I got coverage, professional coverage, who gave me a ton of ideas. Went back in, redid things, sent it back to nickels the next year. And it didn't even make anything. It depends who reads it on those things. You got, you got yeah. young interns who are reading those things for $25 a script. So it really doesn't, I still send one a year to Nichols and that's it. This is a cottage industry by these people. Absolutely. This cottage industry, even like coverage, I only get coverage from certain people. I get some from Pierce for free. Like I said, that director was good. And if I send it to, I get a read from a director or a producer, I'll ask the producer. Listen, I really appreciate it if you can tell me 
what you liked, what you didn't like, even if they reject it. And most of them are good guys. They will. Most of them, 90 percent of them will. Some will say, I don't have time for you. But that's OK, because it is their time. So you so, think the best thing to do is look through ink tip and screenwriter staffing and look at you know assignments and or I think you better have my this script I'm on now and it's it's in my query letter is on its twenty seventh full rewrite, full rewrite. Now I'm not talking about going in to change a line or two. I'm saying full rewrite. And I just okay. went back to make a couple of changes that the coverage people said. I thought they had one or two good ideas to even do it. And I found have uh, Right now I'm on 50 changes because I, I right now I do a line thing with my editor so she can find the, the changes and check it for grammar. So I mean, this is my fifth year, with fourth year with the script. Okay, the Western that uh, Christine told me about is my third year with the script, and that's going through about seven or eight before I finally got that producer to look at it and gave me, you know, it, some of the stuff he said was wonderful, but it does need some work still. And sure. it'll probably take me three or four more rewrites with that one to get where it's competitive. Yeah. This one I feel now is competitive. Nick, seriously, look around you. This is quite a mature audience here, right, Nick? Right, We've right. been doing this for a while. Yeah. We're trying to know the ropes, trying okay. to save you heartache, trying to save you money. Seriously. Okay. And I don't think, Nick, you've done the 20 rewrites that I gave you a page on. Yeah. All yeah. the different types of rewrites you have to do. Mm -hmm. and, and you told me the last time you were working on three different scripts. So I can't see you having done, uh, you know, 20 rewrites by, by July on these three scripts. Especially since you said you're working so much full time. Sure. Okay. Great. Yeah. I just add that um, uh, script competitions sure aren't a, a starter move. Uh, you want to definitely feel like <clears throat> you've uh, done a lot of work to get it ready and getting peer reviews and coverage and other things like that. It's a good idea. There is one another reason to enter contest though is uh, megalomania. So you know that's one reason that I uh, sometimes join uh, because I believe I deserve to win them. So I sign up because I'm like I'm going to kick this contest ass. I deserve this, and you know doesn't necessarily work out that way, but. You know, I just uh, perhaps have unreasonable confidence, but just I enter it partially out of partially out of confidence. I desire to uh, be competitive and to uh, win, you know, and uh, at least I've gotten a few placements that have been good icebreakers. So Julian, you've been writing for years. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> well, you know, but I, I but I mean, I've never gotten a draft 11 on much of anything like Death's Brother. What about Poppycock? What draft are you on? Uh, I've done like, you know, some polishing. I've done some polishing. But uh, five drafts, maybe? Oh, no, no, no. Not even five. But I take a long time to write. So I took a year and a half to write it. Oh. And so I do some editing along the way and I spend a lot of time thinking about it until it's done. So that by the time I get it done and I got some feedback and then I did a polish. And then I, you know, decided that uh, I deserved to win this comedy competition, so I entered it. So um, it's foolish, but uh, you know what? So is a lot of uh, stuff in this business. Sometimes you just believe in yourself and you act. But uh, Nick, un unless you have that kind of uh, almost mentally ill degree of uh, confidence that uh, I have sometimes, then you know, if you feel like you're still in the uh, learning the ropes and practicing and getting good and stuff, and I would probably put off on competitions for now. So, okay, great. There's nothing, wrong, there's nothing wrong with the competition if you just want to enter the competition if you think it's finished. However, I would never get coverage from a competition because think of what I said before an intern's reading your script, the intern's going to give you the coverage. No, well, I got some uh, coverage, I splurged yeah. on coverage from Screencraft, and it was okay, but they still got some things that were just wrong you know they told me that a character who was frozen for 20 years and came out and is using old lingo wouldn't use the term thick which is very popular these days t-h-i-c-c -C to, to mean uh, a well-muscled girl or such but mm -hmm. um, I heard thick used in 1999 when I was um, in California by young kids so this reader sitting there telling me I'm using incorrect 
uh, lingo or, you know, um, uh, slang, and I knew for a fact that it was not incorrect slang. He also mistook my Marx Brothers characters for the Three Stooges. And I was <laughs> not ready to, you know, just not ready to write a complaint. So they often make objective mistakes because they are uh, fast and all. But um, so yeah, I don't know. That was kind of money, not quite. If you, for, if you want to pay for coverage, there are places you can go, and they list the people who are going to give you the coverage, so you can pick yeah. the person you want. It's a little bit more expensive than a contest, but if you wait to the final deadline on a contest, they're about the same. But they're all cottage industries. Like I got mine from two uh, producers that I knew did this type of movie. I was trying to get it in. But the other thing on it is that I did get one from just a random one one time when I first started. And like they had, you know, they said you should spend more time on the bank robbery and maybe have the guy go in with a mask and a gun and stuff. It's not that guy, they robbed the building at night and it's all in there. They have them towing the building away with everything else. And they're, they're, so you could tell the person's just making his $30, $40, whatever it is that they, they gave him for this, the company gave him for this. And like I said, sometimes you get the interns, even with the producers, sometimes you send it to producers' names listed. I would stay away from the big ones if you're gonna pay for it because if you send it to a big producer, He's not giving you the, uh, the uh, coverage. His intern's giving you the coverage. Right. I was just going to say that, your, co your comment on the interns. Um, uh, first of all, if it's going to uh, a studio, that's who's doing it, an intern or a student who's never published a piece of work in their entire life. And I know that from experience, and I know that because some people that I mentor uh, as film students who's, who, who couldn't film their way out of a paper bag get to write coverage for some major studios. And uh, I know just that's why I do not permit my stuff to go to readers, period. Um, I will get, if they're, if they're going to send it to a reader, they can't have my script. And I, that's different than other writers. I just don't do it because first of all, I write very peculiar things, very artistic things that require a lot of artistic vocabulary. I write choreo poems. I write poetic sequences. I write things that are cross format, like live theater into the film atmosphere. That stuff isn't suitable for an intern who hasn't written anything. That's suitable for somebody who's, who's written a lot of stuff and has a very large uh, vocabulary in art and film and drama. So, um, you know, I can see writers, see, I'm very confused about f coverage, you know, and I've been in the industry for a long time uh, because I just wouldn't let my, anybody do it. I know what I write. I know what it's good. I know what it's, you know, it's different than getting an opinion. If I want, personally, if I want somebody to give me coverage whom I trust, I would do that. But why am I going to permit this to go out to a reader whom I just would never trust or don't know, don't care about, to a producer who's too lazy to look at it and make their own decision, serious, too, la too damn lazy to look at it and make their own decision or too incapable. So um, that's just a fact. And too egotistical. You know, yeah, there's no way that you can get around that fact. Um, but so I just, you know, whatever. Um, but I, I do see that, you know, independent producers might accept the coverage you got from somebody else, especially if they know the, the coverage person, things like that. It's shorthand to filter things out. I get it. Um, but just be aware. If you're, it depends who you're submitting it to. Be aware that the person who's writing the coverage on your script is probably so far below you that it's bizarre and um, in, in all likelihood, unless you're sending it like some people here have to people that you know you can respect, whose opinion is, is useful. But if they're an anonymous reader, then what the heck, man, you know? That's my opinion and my rant, I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> Best coverage I got was the first coverage and those were people who had a small company, they had written scripts, their scripts were listed. There was four people there. You get to pick which one you want, depending on your genre and everything else. Mm -hmm. And it came back from them and then the questions and answers. The last one I did was a little higher up. I wanted this producer to look at it, but the first three, it was six and a half pages of coverage, but the first three pages, 
for a synopsis. And the synopsis, like you said, it's a nonlinear dual dial, dual narrative, and they didn't get that. They were like, you know, what's going on? Right, it's a dream sequence. The whole movie's really a dream sequence. And the person in his dream is already dead, and it says that she died of cancer five years ago at the, toward the end, and it goes, oh, you had the person die at the end. No, I didn't have the person die at the end. You could tell with everything that they wrote, they just glanced over it. You know, it was a right. superficial read. And like you're saying, you have to get into these things, right? The best, the best coverage I ever got was you send it to a producer and he does read it. Ask him what he thinks and what he thinks is wrong. And most people are really nice and they want to help you out. Some will do it with the other one. I got a, I got a list of three or four. I'm just waiting on his last rewrite on this thing to send it back to because they gave me ideas when I sent it to him the first time. I said, John, I love the story, but this needs to be hashed out and that needs to be hashed out. So I'm going to send it back to them. Alex. Nick, sorry, mate. <clears throat> Another point. <clears throat> uh, Julian's in a writer's group with me. And trust me, from the seven writers giving feedback, it's amazing feedback they get from seven different people. But the point I wanted to make was, we have a friend of ours, uh, Randall. He's actually in Miami. I've known the guy forever. <clears throat> He won the international screenwriting competition called Kairos. He won $30,000. He got meetings with people. Okay. It's a very specific type of competition. It's about religious themes. But the script has gone nowhere. Do you know why, Nick? I'm going to tell you why. Because most times as a writer, we're writing our own material as a calling card to get work from producers and executives. He is now hired to write a script for a famous actor slash producer on a movie idea that this producer wants to make that's going to invest the $5 million to make the film. It's a calling card. Your writing has to be on such an amazing level that people notice you to hire you to do other work. It's so rare for us to get our own scripts made into films, unless you do like a lot of us indie films, we kind of find the financing and do it ourselves. So I would just suggest, Nick, you listen to everybody here. Yeah. Send me your first 10 pages. You and I will spend an hour together. Okay. See the light. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to see the light. Uh, yeah. there is a, there's a point I'd like to make, too. In the old days, when I was submitting scripts to festivals and contests, I won Sundance. Now, in order to win Sundance 10, 12 years ago, that was that was up there. That was pretty much top of the line in those days. And I have sent that same script out to a couple of small time festivals that were just trying to get going. And I thought, well, maybe they'd like to see what a, a winning script looks like. Because I knew it was run by interns. That script never even got accepted. <laughs> so I spent 50 bucks and nobody accepted a, a winning script. And they didn't know why. So not keep the other your wallet thing, in your pocket. Final thing, Nick, is I read an article. I used to, when I first started, say, I want to win a contest, and maybe that would be my foot in the door. And I read this big article, and I forgot what it was on one of the sites that's a good site to read and learn. And it was about how to win contests. But then when you got three quarters of the way through it, you realize that the guy was telling you that writing for a contest is totally different than writing for a film. Mm -hmm. When you write for a film and you send it to a producer, it's a vision. When you write it to a contest, it's a contest entry that has to meet certain forms. They're checking off boxes, okay? Where a producer's checking off boxes, but it's a different type of box, if you know what I mean. I, I, I don't know. You guys are more experienced. Do you agree with that? It's totally different writing for a contest than writing for a film? Absolutely. You know, these contests that you're writing for, and I think everybody in here has mentioned it. They, I've seen them where they literally have volunteers and interns that uh, read this stuff for free, uh, just so that they think that they're getting information or knowledge. You know, the, the clerks that used to work for the, the writer's store when it was open down on Wilshire, uh, they would write or you know, read scripts for free just so they could get the experience. They weren't helping you in any way, shape, or form. They were just collecting your, your paycheck, and that's it. Okay. So go for it, Nick. 
Yeah, yeah. We support you. Yeah. The industry appreciates your support. <laughs> yeah, so Nick, you've got, except uh, yeah. Nichols, except you said Nichols, uh, one or two of the top ones, right? So ScreenCraft is not good. I heard somebody was saying ScreenCraft is... I, the only reason I was considering ScreenCraft because I went to some of the webinars. Um, I believe Christine emailed me, and um, so I thought it was a little bit more repeatable and um, more knowledgeable. But I didn't like their coverage. I didn't like the coverage I really got from ScreenCraft very well. Okay. Nick, you missed the conversation earlier. I'd placed in the top 3% of a competition. There was 5,200 people that applied. 5,200 people. I made the one top 150. So think of all that money that the company's making, you know, 5,200 people times 50 bucks, quarter of a million dollars made. It's all a money uh -huh. racket. Save your money. Yeah. I didn't tell you. Save you the one contest a year and that's it. And I entered one thing into nickels. If I win it, I win it. If I don't, I don't. You know, if it comes in at the top 20, when I send out the letter, it's in there. You know, they came in. Only, yeah, I mean, I'm considering Nichols, but I feel like the other one, I just like the layout of screen, but like it gives you some more time to do it. That's the only thing. Um, I don't know if the other top competitions give you enough time. They uh, all add up. We're, we're, it, it sounds like everybody's trying to talk you out of this. We're not really. We just don't feel we understand why you feel you must enter a competition because it's expensive. It's, yeah. it's a crapshoot you can write and you can get very, very good feedback oh. from Alex who's offered okay. it to do it and valuable right. feedback as a writer for free. Yeah. Like, yeah. why would you do this for, you know, it, um, it just, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I don't yeah, understand yeah. why you would. I think it was because just, uh, what are you getting out of it? Yeah, I think just, I mean, what I talked to, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm open to, you know, everybody's feedback and, you know, again, I am starting off. So I just I wasn't sure what, the best route is but um i think it just uh, kind of motivates me like just if i know that i have to have something um like you know like pretty really good that you know i'm confident enough to submit it gives me enough confidence so i can work on it more oh. it kind of like kicks my butt if i if i don't have something to look forward to then i'm kind of like you know i do have look, other things going on so i've just christine just kicked your butt a little further earlier about <laughs> stuff that you haven't written yet i mean yeah. i mean if you're not let's be honest if you're not motivated to do that why is somebody you don't know that you don't interact with going to make any difference the question That's is true. do you really want to be a writer if right. you really want to be a writer then write and just do it if sure. and and you know you've got you seriously there are people here that are willing to mentor you one way or another and and don't you know if you're serious about being a writer take advantage of that and follow up with Christine. You know, she's okay. not, she didn't do that up because she's, well, she did do it because she's a nice person, but she didn't do it for her, for her, um, you know, her health. She's there to help you. So okay. um, there you go. I mean, if you still want to enter it, you know, uh -huh. go ahead, but whatever. No, I mean, I might understand why I'm you do. I think I'm going to reconsider. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Allison, you had your hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I understand where Nick's coming from, being a relative new writer myself, that compelling need to enter because it gives you a feeling of, well, I'm in the race now. It's like buying a lottery ticket. If you don't buy a lottery ticket, then you've got no chance of winning. But if you're there, at least you're there. You've got a chance. And like you said, Nick, it gives you something to look forward to. But I moved past that actually quite quickly. I entered the, the screen craft and two others, uh, including Austin, very, you know, very... Um, overly confident and um, ScreenCraft got through and going to semis, I was extremely excited, but I agree that the feedback was, was not good. But um, now I feel that I agree with John, I think, that I think I would only aim for Nichols being the one where they, I think they even say, don't even think about the budget. We, and don't think about anything except doing your best writing. We'll worry about that later. Uh, and then you can just write whatever you want to write. So I've I've managed to move past the need to enter the the competitions for exactly the reason that you're saying, Alex. That I I do see it's just a, a big money spinner and a little bit unfair. And and in Australia, you know, our, our exchange rate is so bad that fifty dollars is actually like seventy five eighty. So it gets very expensive for us. Yeah. Yes, Alex. 
Thank Nick, you, Allison. You yeah, thanks for your feedback. Yeah. Nick, have you seen the film Arlington Road? No, I have it. No, I have. Go watch it. That's a Nichols winner. I have you seen look. the movie Land of the Is Block? it on Amazon or? You can I don't know, on. man. What do you think? I am a VC, <laughs> a blockbuster video here. You don't know what blockbuster is, do you, Nick? Okay. <laughs> go look at Arlington Road and go look at Land of the Blind. If you tell me, in all honesty, your script or your film ideas are as good as those, then you should go ahead and enter Nichols. Okay. 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 Great. That's all I'm going to say. Go watch uh -huh. those two films. Sure. And the and better. I doubt uh, Nick. Nick, uh, I think one of the things that you you need uh, you're you're talking about these contests as being motivation for you. I think you need to commit to deadlines yourself, um, and not just keep it to yourself, but commit to let's say, for instance, us that by this time next month I am going to have rewritten X. And, and then you have to show up and declare that you haven't or you have. And I've, I've joined several groups and uh, that have motivational, inspirational uh, aspects to them. And setting deadlines and making a plan is all part of it. And when you make it public or you declare it to your peers and others in your group, uh, that that is as, as much a motivation as as uh, sending it out to uh, a deadline in a contest. That's what sure. I find anyway. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think Christine mentioned earlier. Um, like, I mean, maybe in a few, maybe in October, November, she has like Excel sheet. Um, you know what what she's going to be doing on a daily basis or weekly milestones and monthly milestones. Um, and yeah, I mean. Like how many pages, how many rewrites. So yeah, maybe there I need to, you know, have some plan um set up. You know, I think that, you know, that we have we have twelve week plans. Um twelve week plans with okay. with the Creative Academy for Writers. And okay. we get together every quarter and uh develop our, our twelve week plan. Uh, okay. it's very motivating. Okay, great. That's good feedback. Thank you. So like I had uh, mentioned, I think back in December that uh, uh, one of the webinars that I went on for a Hallmark um, Christmas writer is that uh, she writes at least three new scripts a year. So I said for that to be your goal, it, it doesn't have to be totally revised, but at least you've got the first draft done, three new um three new drafts of um, scripts in one year. And then, yeah. of course, you're always uh, revising your, your other uh, uh, scripts that haven't been sold yet. Sure. Yes, John. Yeah, two last things about the contest that I was guilty of, okay? The first one is they head up. You say, oh, it's only $60 here. It's only $50 here. So I came in the top 20% in nickels. Right away, I got excited. I entered the page, which was another 75. Then I was a finalist in Austin, okay, with the same script. Oh, I'm really excited. This script's going, okay? Then I entered two other contests. Then I realized I spent already like $400, $500 on this thing. Oh, and right. I haven't, it adds approved, up it. Right I haven't approved it. The final thing, the other <laughs> one of it is, and this goes back to what I said before about writing for contests. If you ever read one of Tarantino's or the Coen Brothers scripts, and Shadow, you talked about somebody that you had write for you who is awful grammatically, but she has great ideas and everything. So you just have, it's a great thought process and everything else. Those three people would not win a contest. The Coen Brothers have their own way of formatting. They don't follow interior, exterior, and everything else. Quentin Tarantino writes in his own world. Okay. Yeah. They would not win a contest. The girl that he, 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 he buys her scripts, shadow buys her scripts from, is not going to win that contest because of the fact that she writes well, but she doesn't have, they're looking for certain things to check boxes. And if you don't make the first checks, you don't get to the real readers. So again, if you want to enter one, I would, I, it's not the wrong, I mean, if you want to throw your first script down in the nickels, I did it. I'm not going to complain about it. I still have an ego. I'll sell it out because I have an ego, just like Julian said, everybody, I'm a competitive person. I coach football for 45 years. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm the guy that love competition. 
The problem is I, I also understand when you love competition, you better be ever you better have a little bit of a tough back too, because you're gonna get knocked down, especially when what was Nichols was was it forty eight hundred or seventy eight hundred that year? Oh you know wow. Saying? I felt good I made the top twenty percent, but still with that eight hundred people, you know what I'm saying? So the eight hundred people above me, you know, and these are not the real writers, they're not entering that. They're over in Hollywood writing for money. Yeah. You know, the one, this goes back to the one thing that I was saying, if you want to be a writer and you want to be something like a Tarantino or the Coen brothers or something like that, you do that by being personable, by being on set and by working with people and making your connections. And that can take you years. And it's not something you're going to learn in school. You're not going to learn that in film school. Alex, silence yourself, please. You know, um, do you know, uh, Nick, do you know Robert H. Heinlein? No. No? Oh, shame on you. Um, science fiction writer. Okay, so he's long gone now. But Robert H. Heinlein decided to be a writer one day. I can't remember the actual story. He wrote, he sold every, every single thing that he ever wrote, he sold. And his position was, I'm, I'm, today I'm a writer. I'm a professional writer. I'm not a writer. I'm not an amateur writer. I'm a professional writer. I'm going to make my living like this. Um, it took him decades to sell some of his earlier stuff because it wasn't nearly as good. But his point was, what I do is worth something to somebody. And that's, this is what I do. And um, to, just to, to back up with Doug and, the, and, and uh, John's note, the, the people that I've talked about who or awful grammatically. I mean, it's unreadable. Uh, the reason I would work with them is because their stories are amazing. And we can, and the they, they, script is okay. It's just like terribly distracting, which will, and it will never get past a reader. But, but it's an amazing story. And this is the kind of thing that a producer and director wants. So you get to know those people. You are a writer you find somebody who needs a writer and you sell them on your services and prove to them in their heart that you can do it no matter what your background is. I'll, I'll I talk too much. There you go. Alex. <laughs> sure. so, sorry about the muted. So I, I asked Google last year in, in uh, the Nichols, um, 7,831 scripts were submitted to the competition and only 2% advanced to the semifinals. And about 10 to 15 entries reach the finals. Um, a, a kind of good competition to enter, even though I'm kind of answer competitions, would be Frank, Francis Ford Coppola's. Very strict genre, right? He only wants one type of genre. And if you make that top 11, he reads them and answers the top one. So that's kind of a different slam because it's him and what he wants on these competitions. So... That's what is it called? What is it? Zoe so trope. I just write it because I probably have okay. lost up the pronunciation. So I had a question. So just something very specific. Yeah, I mean, let's say you know, I actually, um, you know, sometimes I, you know, think of ideas, and um, I mean, uh, there was a Netflix show that just got released last week called Bombay Begums, and I actually, I don't know, I felt like I um, had something very similar um, in mind. And I mean, the show already got released. And so does that happen to anybody when you, you know, you have something very similar to what got released? And then but, if it's an Nick, idea, Nick, you, yeah. what you have to do is, like I said before, you have to write these things down, but you've got to complete something. Yeah. You haven't completed, you're working on three things. Yeah. And and uh, you haven't completed a first draft yet, and that's got to be your first priority. You got to have at least yeah. one first draft. You, you keep going round and round. Right. Okay. And Nick, if it's an idea, if you have an idea, count on it. There's thousands of people with that identical idea right now. What's okay. important is your execution of the idea. Ideas okay. are cheap. Everyone has one, but it's your execution that's yours alone. And that's what's okay. copyrightable. Okay. Yeah, according to, I want to make a comment here for Alex, who is saying that we don't have Blockbuster anymore. We still do. There's one shop left over in Bend. And my question to everybody in here, I'm old, so I may not know the answer to this, but everybody's talking about the nickels. 
what the hell is the nickels? There's the G nickel that I'm aware of, that's but a, I don't know what the nickels is. No, no, that's what we're talking about. The one that's connected to the Oscars, the G nickel. That's the G nickel. That's it's the one we're talking the, about. We're just being right. lazy. We're just saying nickels because we're lazy. Well, don't be lazy. Okay, sorry. That's what it is, yes. And, you know, Nick, you're talking about something. You've written a script that somebody else has already hit that idea and it came out. I wrote a script called Georgia's Gorge, uh, G Gorgeous George, a few years back. And if, for those of you who don't know, he was the first boxer that ever really made it on television. And I submitted that to several places. It was immediately optioned. The script was immediately purchased and immediately went into development hell to never be seen again. And the reason for that was that Million Dollar Baby was in production. The Wright Brothers Classic Flight, the day after that, the first people took off in France. You yeah. never heard of those two brothers over in France because the Wright Brothers took off, yet they had the same information. Absolutely. And Howard Gardner talks about the way the mind works and everything in today's universe. He's fabulous for that. And it's called this uh, similar ideas. And what's it Glo global information or something? I forgot what it's called, but it, it's everybody now has the, the same information. It's just being able to get it out there faster because nobody ever heard of those guys from France. Nobody ever heard of them. They, they took off the day after the Wright brothers. They didn't know the Wright brothers took off the day before that. So, in those days, news didn't get around so fast, you know? And then I think there was two movies that came out uh, within a few weeks of each other that they didn't know about. And one, um, and, and both were about uh, problems with an asteroid that they uh, put some men on an asteroid, a uh, sci-fi. Armageddon, and the other one was uh, the one with, um, Deep impact. Yeah, deep impact. And they, they cut, that happens a lot. They had the White House down and the White House is burning or something like that. Do you remember they had those two? They were within a week of each other. That happens a lot. Dante's Peak and Volcano, Ants and a Bug's Life. Yeah. yeah. The major studios share these things. The, the deep impact Armageddon one has a story with Spielberg, which is pertinent to writers. Well, more to directors than writers, but I can tell it some other time. But uh, it's very interesting. But that's the thing that the ideas are flying around us all over in, in um, mind space. And it's whoever gets it first and puts it into uh, written form, you know, and, and uh, gets it uh, pitched and, and sold, like uh, Doug said, you know, because you don't know who is working on something similar that's uh, being produced out there and, and they may absolutely love it. But, uh, you know, if somebody gets out there first and, and uh, you know, that they don't want uh, to be second best because somebody came out with, uh, and it might be an inferior film, the, the first one, but oh, I already saw that one on volcanoes. I don't want to go to another volcano movie right now, you know. And, and usually they can't uh, shelve it for a couple of years because, of course, you know, the investors need their money. So it's, it's always interesting, uh, you know, how do you come up with all of these uh, new ideas? Because uh, one of the horror uh, scripts I'm working on is uh, to do with somebody in an elevator. And um, I think it was Doug that told me, or somebody told me about uh, the movie Devil um, with the, in the elevator. So I was able to use um, some of what happened in, in, uh, in that movie for, for my script, but but I still have to think of, of how to make it longer because um, the two produce, well, four producers that are interested, the one minimum of, of 70 pages. And 
So I have to keep thinking. Yes, Alex. The other thing to think about, finally off topic, right, is to find a new twist on an old tale. So I think one of the reasons why Sunday and our script is really moving along with people is it's an African-American version of Thelma and Louise. So we've got a similar old school, I say old school, early 90s film that was very successful and we've put a different spin on it. And that's why people really can identify when we talk about the script and the comps. So sometimes, yeah, you've got all great ideas out there, but sometimes you take an idea that's been tried and true maybe and twist it in a different way. Well, so many of the classics have been modernized into teen movies. How many times have we seen Cinderella? How many times have we seen Sleeping Beauty? Right. You know, they're all over the place. And the thing that, I think one of the things that makes it interesting for a screenwriter, let's say I wanted to write another Cinderella story, but I would write it from maybe one of her stepsister's point of view. So it could become a whole new story based on that. Yeah. One, of my, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite movies that my daughter watched, and I absolutely love it, is She's the Man. It's a Shakespeare show set in modern times with a girl who wants to play soccer. It's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant twist on a Shakespeare story. Look at how many versions of Groundhog Day are being made now. We have Boss Level. Another one, you know, Palm Springs, the show Russian Doll on Netflix. Uh, they're going to do a sequel to Edge of Tomorrow. I'd be real careful if I was going to start a new Groundhog Day type movie, because by the time you might get it made, that could be played out because it's happening a lot. So we might be reaching the end of that one. But just a thought. That's one of the things that I advise to new writers not to, to follow. If you're writing for what's hot today, you're already three to five years behind the times. Yeah, because it takes that long to go from script to screen at least. It's gonna take a minimum of three years, likely five, oftentimes over seven. And I've seen films that haven't come out for you know, 10, 15 years after being written. So you can't write for today's what's hot today. It just ain't gonna work. But the one thing uh, a lot of producers are looking for is different ethnicity points of view. Today they are. Yes, today. They, they wouldn't have 20 years ago, but today they're looking for uh, stories with uh, ethnic characters in it. So Blazing Saddles, if you wrote that today, you couldn't get it made. made. Yeah. Nick, why just put one of the greatest scripts I've ever read in the chat. Make sure you download it, Nick. It's your homework for tomorrow night. <laughs> okay. All right. Arlington yeah. Road. Brilliant script. Okay, great. Yeah. Brilliant script. Thank you. So our next um, Zoom meeting will be on, um, to look at the calendar, April, Monday, April the 5th. And we're going to be talking about conflict because my script doctor said that my um, Hallmark TV pilot needs more conflict. So I have to figure out how to do more conflict. And, and so I might as well do some research on it and uh, write a document on it. So Christine, not in two weeks time on the 29th? Not in the 29th? No, okay. the first and third. Okay. Only the first and third, because I know. Gotcha. And like I said, if you know anybody else who wants to uh, get involved with our horror uh, writing uh, group. There's just Mark and me so far, and we could get uh, two or three more people. So strictly for horror writing. Okay. Critique. 
Uh, you know, that brings me back to the point that I was making earlier. Why are you writing all these horror scripts right now? Horror movies are all over the place. Well, because uh, four producers are have asked me to, to read the scripts. Great. Do you think they're going to be the made in... Do you think they're going to be made into movies in four or five years that are going to make a dollar? Or do you think by then we'll be on to something else? We may be bringing back the Westerns. We may be heavy into sci-fi. We may be heavy into rom coms You know, you, you're playing the odds by writing what's hot today. No, as Julian just put in the chat, horror movies are, are forever. It's... it's uh... It, it's a big market out there. It's every month in uh, the Ink Tip uh, newsletter. They want horror scripts, especially contained, uh, low budget. I'm going to tell you one thing, and I'm hold. You can hold me to it. Horror movies are not a forever thing. Really, they're not. No, they're they're very low budget. Low budget doesn't mean that it's you know high profit. Horror movies are not a forever thing. Period. Your script is about people. Every script you see is about people. People interacting with other people. People interacting with an environment. Now you know when you see a bunch of bikini-clad girls running around in a gravestone at you know a cemetery at night for no apparent reason. Uh, you know, it's just not going to fly. Bring me back an old time film. Show me a Gone with the Wind or show me a, a Casablanca or something out of Africa or something of that nature. Don't show me these popcorn movies. That's, that's what the teenage boys want. Yeah, well, that's, who cares what the teenage boys want? Yeah, the teenage girls are the ones that want the, the horror movies in the movies. That's because they can scream and the teenage boys will protect them. That's yeah. for that audience. It's, it's not uh, a general Oscar audience. It's, it's just uh, the date night uh, audience. Right, it's the popcorn movies. Yes. And that's not a forever thing. No, no. Honestly, honestly. <laughs> I had a question, uh, Julie, um, we, Wyatt uh, sent a PDF. I don't think I have a drop. Uh, had, it's sending on Dropbox, but I'm trying to open it, the PDF. Um, Nick, Nick, just go to print and then save as PDF. Um, you don't have Dropbox mm. on the bar? You can be able to go to print and then hit save as PDF rather than. Uh, let's see. Hmm. It says paste this link in your browser to preview. Uh, let's see. If you hover near the, if you hover underneath the, uh, the writer's name, Aaron's name, there should be a little bar. It's going to say 119 pages and then a, a printer icon. If you hit that, your print thing will set up and then you go save as PDF and you'll save the script that way. Mm, I don't think it. Here's me, the non techie guy teaching you something in there. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. So I'll send Nick the instructions. So it'll be interesting how the Oscars will be presented uh, this year. Since they're going to be the end of uh, April and, and I guess everything's still, California is shut down for COVID. What kind of um, how they'll be doing their presentations, or or they're only al allow the nominees in the theater, that sort of thing. Uh, what's too bad? No more, no more of us seat warmers in the in the hall. I heard that Globes was a disaster, so um, people are thinking that the Oscars might do a better job. Hopefully. Said the Grammys were well done, so maybe they'll get it. Maybe it'll be good, but because enough people have have been doing this technical stuff for you know a year now, so you'd think that uh, the biggies would would get it right. 
you would think, wouldn't you? <laughs> would think, right. And I think what you might be is what we like to call wrong. <laughs> yep. Especially this year, I get, apparently Borat got a nomination. So oh, yeah. <laughs> there's something, the Academy's losing it. And so just seriously. Yeah, with eight credited writers, I believe. Yeah. On something that was mostly like planned and then improvised on the spot. For the, yeah. Like, for, like, you know, like, Academy... How did that get nominated? Motion picture, arts and sciences, and, and as and with respect to Borat with some of his stuff, which is some of it is pretty funny. I, I wouldn't call it groundbreaking technically or artistically in any way, shape, or form. So <laughs> good movie. Know, good you know, movie. Funny. But, but Academy, no. Yeah, it's I mean, funny movie. Screenplay? Screenplay? Yeah. No, it was best actress. I don't know what it was. It's crazy. Um I think Minari Minari, right, is getting a lot of nomination. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but yeah. Minari, yeah. Okay, Nick so Jonas, Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra are hosting. I don't know if they'll be there. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. <laughs> okay, Pat, tell us what you're gonna be working on the next two weeks. Um, I've got my thriller to keep working on. Um, I'm going to check in on the Screencraft Summit. They're doing virtual this year. That's the next month. So I'll see what they're, they're doing. Um, and whatever else pops up. <laughs> <laughs> and you're working on a horror too, right? Um... I have, yes, I'm working on a, a short with Alex French. Um, I have to rewrite the dialogue again, but it's very close. Good. Wyatt, what are you going to be working on? You have to unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was uh, actually looking at another application. Uh, Nick, I'm trying to get another document to you. Um, are you on Facebook? Uh, yeah, you can add me on Facebook. Okay, let's do that and I'll get okay. you the document. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank okay, you. Okay, super. Um, I'm working on, as I said, breaking uh, a new pilot that I've been uh, uh, stewing over for about six months now. Um, putting a pitch together for a feature and um, yeah, trying to make new connections. Thank you, um, Shadow, Alex, uh, everybody uh, for your, for what I've heard today. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's been informative for me and I'm a fairly new guy to all of this as well, even though I've been going six years in uh, writing screenplays. And uh, Alex had asked me in the chat whether I was going to chime in. Everything you guys said about competitions rang very true to me as somebody who for three years has sent out scripts and competitions. And I recently read a post uh, from a woman on Facebook who had done the same thing and she felt she was throwing her money away. So for a year, Every time she felt she had something she wanted to put in the competition, she took that money and put it aside and she wrote the best short that she could. And at the end of that year, she had like 1600 bucks that she put towards that short and she made the short. Wow. So she went from writer to filmmaker. And to me, that makes absolute sense. I am doing my taxes so I just went over, not including the, the submissions that I have put my short film into. Um, I've spent about 600 bucks on script submissions to competitions with a semi-finalist at Hamilton and a, a best in uh, Montreal monthly. So yeah, okay, it's good validation. And like Julian, I, well, megalomania, yeah. <laughs> I want the recognition, yes. Anyways, so, yeah. So, Nick, what these people are saying, take it to heart, man. Good. Dean. So I'm going to 
finish my, I'm um, looking to add in my final scene right after this call in my short film, and then hopefully get the rewrite done in the next two weeks. And then if I have enough time still between working a job and all that, then I'm going to start outlining on the feature that I've been existing in my head for the past little while, uh, outlining, you know, coming up with all that stuff, getting a good blueprint going before I actually sit down to start writing it every day. Great. Alex. I'm actually in a class with Mr. Dave Trottier, the uh, screenwriting Bible guy, learning a lot. It's a lot of work. It's a three week course and it's assignments basically every other day. It's taken up a lot of my time. But one of the last assignments is we've been rewriting different scenes. Now we send him our work, I think our first six pages, and he revises it. And then we sit down with him via Zoom and go through it. So kind of really looking forward to that. I'd met him once and I pissed him off. So um, he remembered me when I first signed up for his course. So I've had to like work extra hard to kind of make up for the uh, sarcastic comments I made, but whatever. He got over it. Hey, Dave, Dave's a pretty nice guy. No, he's a very Hopefully. nice guy. He's just that uh, he, he was having, what happened was it was the day of the riots, January 6th. I was on a course with him. So I guess, of course, it was a little sidetracked and I made a funny, sarcastic remark about us both having the same barber and he didn't laugh. So we're, we're friends now. Uh, on the 27th, I'm having my first real big meeting concerning my project, uh, my shorts project. I'm finally having all my writers get together on a format like this with all my members of the Youth Advisory Board of these young people who have been critiquing the scripts. And then I work with the writers on the script development. So I'm really looking forward to kind of both sides of the teams coming together for the first time. I think it'll be very interesting to see um, the writers meeting in a sense, kind of like these young kids. I mean, I have three 13 year olds, an 18 year old. So I have some, a lot of younger people in the um, advisory board that kind of guide some of the rewrites with the scripts. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that on the 27th. And that is also my next meeting with my mentor, Giovanni Lompassi, who is going to be critiquing and reviewing my own six page proof of concept script that I've been working on in all the different formats of the uh, platform. He finally gets to read it and critiques it on that day. So I've got some really cool things to look forward to. But Nick, you are my priority this week. <laughs> First 10 pages by the time you go to bed tonight and then we'll set up a Zoom call. I've got Friday open, okay. very special people. <clears throat> I'm adding you for this Friday, sir. No excuses. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, it's, it's I mean, I'm, I'm just, I want to make sure it's good before I sent it. That's why it's, uh, you know, it's pretty novice still, you know, so. Nick, it's okay. You have to have a baseline. Just send me your first 10. Now you have them now. That's it. Okay. Make sure you uh, grammar correct it, spelling correct it. Yeah, at least do that. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay, Shadow. Okay, so um, after this stuff is launched tomorrow, uh, we're doing our first um, work on developing some virtual theatrical properties. One is something called Three Gothic Doctors, written by Joy Medea. Uh, you, some of you might know him. He's on stage 32 once in a while. Um, but he did this as a play. It's Dr. F it's his original it's an original play, but it's uh, a take on Dr. Frankenstein, Dr. Jekyll, and Dr. Moreau. And uh, he did it as a staged reading slash play in a psychiatric institution, took place right in this institution in 2014. And uh, he just had a book come out, the development of it, and uh, we've developed a longer proper stage play for it. We're going to do that. And then I have a property called, that, which I didn't write, but somebody submitted to me that uh, we're going to go ahead with, we think, called Quit or Die. Uh, on, It's a musical about the life and last end times of Lady Die. Um, so we'll see how that goes. You know, plus my other writing stuff that I do on the side. So, Great. But Nick, I don't want to hear from Alex next time that you didn't show up. So you get that thing written 
Oh, and yeah. don't, don't worry about how good it is. It'll never be good enough. Trust me. We do yeah. our scripts until literally, seriously, until the last day we're finished filming and then on into editing, we're still changing our scripts. So don't worry about it. It's not done until you say it's done. Okay. So uh, yeah. Get your first draft. shitty first draft. <laughs> shitty first draft. Who cares? Don't judge yourself. If you judge <laughs> okay. yourself like yeah. that, you're never going to get it done. Just do it and get it to them. Okay. All right. Okay, Doug. Well, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do this week. I think that I'm going to get started on building my little film <laughs> festival. Goodness gracious doing the film festival, and I think it's about time I get back into doing some more production work. I know that now that this COVID thing is kind of lifting out here. We're working on a teaching schedule, so I will be back to teaching screenwriting, and I think I'm going to add uh, teaching directing. I may set up an entire school out here on DSLR filmmaking. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Oh, Shadow, you like your uh, black magic? And I was thinking about picking up the uh, 6K Pro that they've come out. Have you used that one yet? The 6K? No, we used the 12K Ursa yeah. Mini Pro, that one. But we, we shot in 8K. But um, So is that, you're talking about a different camera? or? Yeah, it's a uh, pocket black camera. Come, it was a pocket camera, the 6K Pro, which I have okay, no we used the pocket camera 4K. And we used this, the Ursa Mini 8 at uh, 12K and um, of some other uh, Black Magic stuff. I like Black Magic. I don't like their old cinema cameras, but. Yeah, uh, I didn't like their old studio cameras. Yeah. Okay, John. But that's what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to continue to. Um, I got to send the script out for a couple. Going to continue with rewrites. I'm going to, thanks to Alex, now I have an NDA I'll send to those two people who wanted it and get it out to them too. And uh, now I got a couple of things on the back burner with new ideas, but I want to get these. I decided I'm just going to concentrate on, I got five scripts and I just want to concentrate on getting them all polished, ready, rather than jump around from one yeah. to the other, back to the other, that kind of thing. So Good. Julian. Yeah, it's kind of a weird place being done with the script. I'm not ready to really start anything big right now. I do have to review a script for our group with Alex here uh, <clears throat> a week. That's my immediate priority. Right now I'm fixing up some old scripts. I did discover uh, Script Hop. I don't know if you guys have heard about Script Hop, but you know Alex has talked about pitch decks a lot. And these don't seem quite as elaborate, but it is something that they're pushing at um, Script Revolution. But you uh, get a link and it takes you to this sort of presentation of your script. So I've done it for Poppycock and Death Brother right now. And it uh, has sort of, you know, like, um, you, like you set up for your characters, who your dream cast people would be. It has like quotes from them. It has like um, sort of a, a more uh, fuller in-depth presentation of your screenplay. And you can put in some pictures, but um, it doesn't seem like I can put in that many. But, uh, but so I'm working on script hop and getting... I want to do one for all my uh, scripts um, and fix up some old ones as well. Um, and then uh, some kind of like, you know, um, just some business like uh, profiles and like, like uh, doing the, the work of uh, doing queries and stuff. And I want to do more on uh, network ISA and, and get a little bit more active on stage 32. Thank you, Christine and uh, Shadow, for joining my uh, Script 32 networks, you know. So when I see you guys, someone I know on there, I usually try to add them and all. Um, and then, you know, uh, working on a story idea, uh, Doug took a look at my short and, and had some suggestions, and he kind of inspired me for an idea for a new script. Hopefully, uh, Doug, you don't mind if I get that written. I hope you would not mind having a read of that, but... Um, would that be okay, Doug? Do you agree? Yeah, I think so. That's probably all right. Thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't be, you know, too fast about it because I've got other projects going. No, but but something you said gave me an idea. And this afternoon I was working on the story for it, trying to crack uh, the plot a little bit. So that's not, I'm still trying to work out the plot exactly, but I think I have a great little kernel for a short there. And maybe I need to, you know, uh, play around with shorts more. So it's it's an interesting 
thing to have that little nugget of an idea and just get that across. And, you know, I have a lot of nuggets. That's that's always my recommendation is to go with the shorts. You write a really good short. That's something that maybe that could be a great before I, because, you know, I think if I go big again, it's probably going to be a novel. Actually, it's time for me to do another novel. I think I have to take the plunge again to prove I can do it twice, you know? So it's like, yeah, you wrote one big deal. Can you do it twice? You know? So uh, I got to prove that I can do t- two novels, but, but the shorts I think is something I, I need to really um, explore as a possibility. Plus it's just practical as well. And they're fun to do. They're fun. So that's what I'm up to. So Mark, are you there? Can you tell us what you're going to be working on in the next two weeks? Well, Nick, we know what you're going to be doing the next yeah. uh, two weeks. Yeah, so I'm working on the the romantic comedy, the cross-cultural romantic comedy about Indian American and Hispanic American. And I'm going to be sending that to Alex. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I have an initial script that I'm working on. So I'm just creating kind of the characterizations. And it's the digital family about the COVID, um, which is... Uh, based on, um, you know, grandparents and their kids and grandkids and how they all got impacted by COVID-19 issues such as divorce, job loss, suicide, um, you know, sensitive uh, topics like that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to download the, the link, the Dropbox, uh, I mean, the Arlington Road. I'm going to review that script um, and just look over ink type and screenwriter staffing. Um, just, yeah, see if there's anything that comes up there and um yeah maybe work on that excel sheet um about you know benchmarks and schedules and how i can you know prioritize and how i can you know work on it consistently um like dedicate yeah so rewrites and things like that yeah so and uh so i've got four scripts uh to work on and uh gonna be reading mark uh, spira's horror script to uh add my comments on for our um, horror writers group next Monday night on the 22nd. Okay, so everybody keep well and keep writing and we'll see you on Monday, April the 5th. Take care. Everybody. Thanks for the invite okay. to the group, Alex, and Great. thank you, Christine. Thank you. Everybody. Good. Thanks. Nice to meet you Bye. all. Take care, everyone.